Julian McPhee, and, and he caught him in a hotel in Washington, D.C., and was able to relate the, uh, the situation as he knew it at that point, maybe not very much at that point, uh, about, the, about the crash and the reports that were coming in on the wire but at, that, at first was that everyone was killed. And so um, Julian uh, then uh, Bob Kennedy advised the president to cancel his trip and go to Toledo as quickly as possible. And so you'll see among the pictures up here in the clippings that came out of the archives uh, of our library, you'll see a picture of, uh, of Julian McPhee uh, meeting the president of the, of the university back, in, back there. And, uh, uh, and then his next step was to be in touch with Clyde Fisher. And Clyde Fisher was to wind up as the chairperson in charge of the, of the fund drives that would take place in, uh, uh, very soon thereafter for many reasons. Uh, but in the, um, in the process, uh, in, in the process, they were faced with undertaking what I consider the worst possible thing that a living human being must undertake. Clyde and Bob divided the list of the people on the, on the plane. And by this time, Sheldon Harden, who was a true hero in the, in the accident in that while he, he was only slightly hurt, it, a fingernail was broken and a finger cut, something like that, went to work pulling as many men out of the plane as he possibly could. And at the same time, interestingly enough, there was a hostess on board the ship and she was, she had her, uh, she, uh, she, and there's a picture of her up here. And she was all belted in when the crash took place. And she found herself when the, when the plane had stopped, when the, had stopped rolling, that she was hanging upside down. Well, she managed to work her way loose and fall the rest of the way down and to get up and to start immediately helping injured men, uh, our players, out of the plane. Uh, we, um, but the night went on and uh, as Sheldon called Kennedy and was able to give him names of, and the condition of the players, and you'll see a picture of that in the Life magazine we have up here. Uh, of, uh, done, uh, he made the list from a uh, list of just the football uh, program for the evening. He'd taken the names and, and he had letters there for them, D for you know what, uh, I for injured, and so on and so on down the line. And um, uh, he, was able to give, as he was able to give names to Bob. Then he, Bob and uh, Clyde continued to make phone calls uh, into the night. And at three, well after three o'clock in the morning on Sunday night, they were making phone, reaching families and telling them the news. But Bob considers that perhaps the worst thing that he ever had to do while he was president or while he was executive vice president or while he was associated with, the, with Cal Poly was to make that, uh, to make those phone calls and be the first to tell a mother or a wife uh, that uh, uh, what had happened to their, their child uh, or their husband as the case may be. Interestingly enough, Keep in mind, those years were some after the Korean War or, and during the war, and we had young men coming back from the wars who were a little older, and um, many of them were married. Out of, out of the whole team, there were 11 young men on the team who were married. There, they, among them, had eight children. They were living in little, very small little apartments and in groups together in some form, and they were able to get uh, uh, get along. Some of those players were getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and working on the campus in various kinds of jobs. And then as the, uh, uh, and then still coming out in the afternoon to play football as well as attend classes. Um, well, there were, there were all kinds of uh, difficult situations like young wives with children, no jobs, who uh, they, because of the, the, the little apartment they were in didn't have a refrigerator or didn't have this or that and the other thing, wherever they'd been an opportunity, they bought them on credit and were trying to pay them off. 
Well, there'd be all these odd things that were to get into the financial arrangements there that would create all kinds of, of uh, hectic kinds of problems. There were all the men who were still in the hospital back east and the bills to be paid. The airline didn't come through, the federal government didn't come through, the state didn't come through, but eventually there an organization down in, in the, the South County did come through. I mean, in not South County, an organization in, in, in Los Angeles came through an athletic association by organizing a game uh, between Los, uh, Los Angeles State uh, and, and, uh, and our, uh, what's the name of our university? Huh? No, Bowling Green. Uh, arranged a game with Bowling Green in Los Angeles, and they took in uh, some $152,000, which uh, doesn't seem like a lot of money now, but that's when $152,000 was still a lot of money. And, uh, and in that way, uh, helped save the day. Bob gave me a statistic, which is kind of an amazing kind of statistic when you look at our university today. Uh, he, he checked out uh, through archives the enrollment of, of, the, of the situation at, at the college as it was at that time. Our total enrollment was 4,497 students. And uh, in, our, in the ag division, we had 1,192 uh, uh, 1, people, of which 96 uh, were women, and he had, um, uh, and we had in the uh, arts and sciences we had 1,425, with uh, 662 were women. Interestingly enough, agriculture now has more students, more female students than male students. Uh, the um, as as our students. Uh, uh, as, as, as we went back, as we are, I received a call, my call came from John Healy, and many of you knew John Healy. John Healy had been uh, in the journalism department, but he, uh, up to, and he was originally hired as an athletic uh, uh, writer and publicity man for the, for the university. And uh, John called me on, a, on Sunday and said, told me about the crash, told me that we were planning a, uh, a memorial and that we had to get out some kind of a newspaper and get it distributed on campus just so the students would know of, uh, of the memorial service. Uh, meantime, on, on that, same, uh, that, that same Sunday and Monday, the media began to arrive here on campus. We had a Life magazine represented. We had Associated Press, we, uh, because Associated, they were able to reach them very quickly. And um, United Press uh, covered the event. We had both Life and Saturday Evening Post. Saturday Evening Post wrote a really interesting story about it because they didn't run their story for a couple, three months. And when they ran their story, they were able now to pick up all the details and all the back log on information that, uh, uh, th that made the whole, makes the whole the story whole. Uh, in gathering these clippings, um, I had the opportunity to work with an old friend, Ken Kenyon, uh, who's in the archives, and he, he organized the clippings, ran off the clippings, and I took them and cut them up and put them on uh, boards as you see them here. Some of those clippings, if you read, if you could sit down and read every clipping there, you'd have the, you'd have a, a wonderful, unbelievable total story of, of, of a human tragedy. I was very, uh, uh, very struck by some of the stories that I read. I guess 